Last time I started designing the Tool 2D layer, and I transplanted all of the rendering code from my OpenGL sp Scratch program into the code base. Now I can bring in the second major piece by transplanting the font parsing and baking code. Along the way, I may do another refinement pass on the design of the Tool 2D layer as new constraints come into contact with this API and the text rendering side of things. Let's see how it goes. First things first, all of the font parsing and baking work I did was independent of rendering code and graphics code. So I need a place in the code base to put this new code that doesn't couple it in with those other layers. I decide a new top level folder called font will be appropriate. First, I'm transplanting the types for both the loose font and baked font right from my Scratch program. And the only changes I'm making are rearranging the naming to fit with the naming discipline of the rest of the code base. In the files named fonttypes.h and fonttypes.cpp, I transplanted everything that was dependency free. For the code that directly depends on free type, I'm setting up a second set of files called font parse by free type.h and font parse by free type.cpp. This keeps the free type dependency isolated so that if I want to use a different font parser later, I can. With all of the separate parts transplanted into the font layer and placed behind this new API, I can start loading, parsing, and baking fonts from the main path. As I think about this, I realize there is one thing I haven't done yet in the font baking code. I have got the code point map and the layout data all working, but what I never did was assemble the final atlas. In order to work on this problem, I decided to do a pass over the Tool 2D API that's going to make my life easier. Instead of assembling the atlas on the CPU side and then submitting it all in one call, I want to just submit the texture in small pieces, which I can do if I tweak my texture API to allow partial updates of the texture data. After that change, I can easily assemble the texture for my atlas with the loose glyphs that I still have from the font parse. The loose glyphs have all of the separate bitmaps that I need to assemble, and they have the glyph index. And then the baked font has a way to take the glyph index to the XY coordinates that were created by the rectangle packer. So putting that together, I can initialize every part of the atlas texture that I actually rely on for rendering. Finally, I need to go implement the texture update API, and I can do that by just calling GL text subimage 2D. I don't know if doing it this way is better or worse than assembling the atlas on the CPU. I suspect transfer rates matter more than the number of calls, but the glyphs can be pretty small, so I should probably circle back around to this in the future and test out more carefully which one is faster. Next, I submit a quad that displays the whole texture, and it looks like this. It's sort of promising, but there's certainly something going wrong here. I think I know what it is. The diagonal streaks look like the sort of effect I see whenever the pitch is wrong on a bitmap copy. This is a bug that comes up in OpenGL a lot, so I suspect what I'm seeing is I need to go figure out a way to change the pixel packing so that it knows I'm using one aligned rows instead of two or four byte aligned rows.
And sure enough, here's the API. GL Pixel Store I with the parameter GL Unpack Alignment tells OpenGL how to treat bitmaps when it is unpacking them. In other words, the bitmap that I send to it. In particular, it controls the minimum alignment of each row of pixels. So when I set that to one, I get this much better looking atlas. This is still not text rendering, but it's good progress for today. All that's left to do is to make a fast string layout helper that combines input strings and the baked fonts layout data to create a quad batch that we could submit to the Tool2D renderer. And that's what we'll work on next time. See you then.